Excellent. So I'm just outside of the, the basic shop. I've just walked really, literally across the hall. Uh, you can see here that at each of the, the rooms we have hand sanitizers when you walk in. I'll first show you the intermediate uh, room and then I'll show you the advanced room. So this is our intermediate shop. Just turn the lights on here. So here you'll be doing um, lighting, fire alarm, relay controls, and you'll also be doing various motor controls dealing with single phase, three phase, and DC motors. Again, this is our classroom here. And when you, hopefully by the time you come back for intermediate, then a vaccine for COVID is, has been found and you'll be doing your learning in class. Otherwise, we'll continue on with the online instruction. And then once your instructor has gone through each of the different types of circuits each week, then you'll come into the shop and then wire up each of the different stations. And again, you'll see that each station is uh, widely spaced out so we can easily allow for social distancing in the lab. Let's start over here on the, the right hand side. So again, when you walk in, there's a hand sanitizer here and we've got some fire alarm panels that have just been mounted up. No devices yet, but we'll be working on that soon. And we'll start over here with some relay controls. So each of the, what we call the whiteboards here, are some relay controls. And so the, the students are working on uh, different scenarios that the instructor has provided them. So on this board, you have uh, some push buttons, you've got some maintain switches here, and again, you've got the relays similar to the basic shop that we, where we saw before, and then the lights on the bottom here. So for these guys, you're learning like a two-wire, what's called a two-wire control, a three-wire control, and then sequencing of relays. Once you're finished uh, this guy, and again, the, the sequence in which I'm showing in the room is not the sequence that you're doing each of the different stations, it's simply how I'm walking around the room. Uh, so once you've done some of the relays, then you may be working on some fire alarm. So in addition to your electrical ticket, there is a separate ticket for fire alarm installations. But as an electrician with the 309 license, you'll be working on these fire alarm systems. We have the, the panel here, We've got smoke detectors and heat detectors, uh, and then we have our initiating devices down here as well. Okay, so be going through all the, the wiring for this, and then uh, applicable codes for each installation as well. We also have uh, some security systems that are mounted on the side here. And you can see that there's a number of uh, diff the same station around the, the room. So here we have another whiteboard here that another student will be working on simultaneous to the other students that are working on the other whiteboards over here. In this room, all you really need is a control screwdriver, um, safety boots, and safety glasses. Uh, all the meters will be provided for you so you can check your voltages and continuity on each of the different stations. Okay, we also have uh, additional security systems here. And then we have, this is a simplex fire alarm system. So this is a more complicated fire alarm system. It's an addressable system. Whereas the other station across the, the way that I just showed you with just a standard panel. Okay, again, we, here we have uh, different initiating devices, the pole stations, smoke detectors, heat detectors, and then various strobes and speakers to wire up as well. Okay, so we usually start you off with uh, relays, fire alarm, and lighting. So one of the lighting stations that we have here, this is called a Douglas 2R, and this is for uh, automation of lighting systems. So you can see here that in the, in the panel here, we have a number of different relays, and those relays are being controlled by a low voltage push button on the side here. So you can have uh, various push buttons control the relays, and the relays ultimately control the lights on the side there with the master controller on the top there. So say you wanted to have the entire floor uh, as lighting turn on at a certain point and turn off at a different point, then you could use the master controller in order to do that. Okay. In addition to uh, each of those guys, we also have nurses call systems that you'd see in the hospitals. And we have a number of different fire alarm stations here 
And here on the back of each of the stations, we have an, these are all the simplex fire alarm systems, whereas the previous one that I showed you was an Edwards system. There's another Douglas two wire to wire up. In addition to the Douglas two wire, we have uh, an older <coughs> GE three wire. So you'll see a lot of these guys in uh, in churches or schools. It's uh, it's the same thought process in the the automation of the the lighting controls, uh, just different ways of controlling them. Okay. Again, we have a number of different stations for each of the these students to work on. So again, we have uh, a Douglas two wire and another Douglas two wire here. So there's lots of room for everybody to work on the same station around the room. Once you've done the relays and the fire alarm and the lighting, then you'll be moving on to motor controls. So one of the stations you'll be working on is this guy right here. It's a DC motor control. So we have a rectifier that's mounted in the room and it takes the voltage from the, the AC voltage in the room and changes it to DC voltage to control that DC motor on the base there. So here you're understanding uh, the wiring for the six point drum switch. There is a DC relay right here. And we have taken all the conductors from the DC motor that's below and gone to this connection right here. And so you're, we're wiring up all of the, the various windings of the motor. So this series, the shunt and then creating uh, a, a, a compound motor as well. So there's three different types of motors that can be achieved with this one motor right here, depending on the way they to wire it up. Okay, in addition to that, we'll be talking about dynamic braking. So a way of using the, the latent energy that's in the, in the motor in order to brake the motor on a dime, rather than using a mechanical brake. Okay, so we have a number of different DC stations around the room. I believe we have one, two, three, four, five, six, there's eight different uh, DC motor stations here. And then if I turn to, uh, to the right here, we have a number of three phase motor stations here as well. So here you'll see that on each of these stations we have a disconnect, then we have a relay similar to the whiteboards that we looked at before, and we have limit switches and push buttons there. Inside each of these disconnects here is either a uh, a NEMA contactor that we see here, or we'll see that there's IEC contactors. Let me see if there's an IEC. There we go, there's an IEC contactor uh, right beside. So these guys are allowing us to do forward reverse on this three phase motor below. And you're walking through all the various ways to control this motor. Again, using two wire, three wire, forward reverse. And you're also, understanding different interlocks that are available on each of those units. In this, uh, in this cabinet right here, we just have a single contactor. So for this guy, we're just controlling in one direction. Whereas in other disconnects, you will see that there are two contactors in that disconnect. So let me walk you over here and you'll see that we have a number of three phase stations here. And most likely in this larger cabinet here, we'll have both the forward and the reverse contactor. Again, so that's a NEMA contactor that we're looking at. So you're understanding all the different components on here and how it switches two of the phases in order to get that motor to run in the opposite direction. Okay, in addition to the, to the three phase motor stations, and again, there's numerous motor con three phase motor control stations around the room for the, sta the students to work on. In addition to those guys, we also have these single phase motors to wire up. So you can see here that the, the single phase motor with the capacitor mounted on top there is also to be wired. And again, we have the six point drum switch that's mounted. All of the, the windings of the motor have been brought out to this terminal box right here. So the students have to figure out what each of the, the terminal blocks correspond to with the internal connections of the motor. And then they use um, various different scenarios in order to, to control it. So this one is actually a dual voltage motor. So it runs on uh, 120 or 28 volts. So they'll be grabbing either the 28 from those two conductors or the 120 from a hot and the neutral conductor to control the same motor there. So they have to figure out um, how to connect the windings in parallel or in series for the appropriate voltage 
and then using each of the different uh, uh, connections on the board here in order to get everything to work. So one is a, a manual station where the drum switch controls the forward and reverse of the motor. And then we've got another scenario where you pick the, the direction of the motor and then you have a, a switch here where it goes manual, off, or auto. And if it's in auto, then this float switch here is controlling the motor turning on and turning off. So you can see here that as we walk around the room, we are looking at everything you'd see in a commercial setting. So lighting, fire alarm, uh, relay controls, and all your various types of motor controls that you'd see in a commercial or industrial setting being the DC motor controls that we saw before, the three-phase motor controls, and the single-phase motor control. All right, so that concludes everything for the, the intermediate shop. I like this shop because it's great. I love these stations that are set up nicely for each uh, individual to work on. And you'll see that below, all of the wiring is mounted below. So you can just set up your, your binder here have the, the different scenarios that the instructor is looking for, and then you can do multiple uh, projects on the one board here. Excellent, I'll take you guys to the advanced shop now, so I'll just stop the, the video and I'll walk right next door to our advanced shop.